Hey again, YouTube. How's your night going? Hope you're enjoying these videos. And uh, back with another one. So, four or five uh, videos uploaded today on the channel, but it's been a while. I've been kind of slacking and busy, busy, busy. So, anyway, enough of that, of that out of the way. Let's get to the next Beckett Hockey uh, Retro Review. So, this one is from August 2007, and Mark Messe is on the cover. Right there, holding the standing up in the Edmonton Oilers jersey. And there's the Vancouver Canucks, New York Rangers. So, right there in the corner, you can see. Sorry, let me try to get that in the light for you all. August of 2007. And here's what it's on the inside uh, letter marks, SPs revealed. So, that's when the letter marks were pretty much new on the market. Uh, State of the Hobby in 2007 and Game Worn Expo Report. And also with this issue, the first pricing of the 0607 V Cup. And Malkin, his uh, rookie patch auto out of 99, debuted at 3000 bucks. That is crazy. So let's get started here. So here's an ad. You can get the, all these from Hockey Inc. autographs. I don't know if any of these businesses are still running. Some of them probably are. But uh, this is 11, almost 12 years ago. Yeah. So, some of the players that they offered. And uh, along with the pricing. So, you had Yager, Ovechkin, uh, Lugvist, Pronger, Thornton, Datsuk, Perry, Efeniganov. I don't know why Efeniganov is there. Uh, Medano, Luongo, Forsberg, and Dominic Hasek. Pretty cool. So, that's all the... Just some advertising. Uh, BMW sports cards. Uh, like I said, I don't know if these guys are running still, but they used to buy vintage lots. So you could probably uh, look up on Google and see if any of them are still running. You might be able to find some stuff. There we go. And uh, so moving on to this. This is the... Let me see. Yeah. This is when Marc Messier's uh, jersey number was retired in Rexall. There we go. And they retired his number in 2007. Okay. So that's a pretty cool shot. Here's uh, Sport Kings. Um, this was released in October of 2007. And had a really nice retro design. A lot of these cards, I, I assume, were like the miniature versions that they used to have way back in the 1930s, 40s, and even before that, uh, Sport Kings gum. So these, this was an issue. And each pack contained one hard-signed autograph card, two memorabilia cards, and three base cards. And I don't know if any of this is on the market in terms of unopened. It'd probably be uh, really expensive if it is. But, pretty cool. You have some uh, vintage names like Eddie Shore, Howie Morenz, Ching Johnson, uh, Martin Broder, Mary Lemieux, Maurice Richard. 73 years. Oh, that's cool. Okay, Mark of the Champion. So, this is an article about uh, Marc Messier. So, this just discusses, uh, yeah, discusses uh, Marc Messier's career, his stats, uh, his contributions to the hobby and yeah so talking about some of the memorabilia and if you want you can pause as I will just go down this article and give that a quick read uh, here's some of his uh, excuse me his uh, issues from artifacts like uh, there's from I believe that's uh, 0607 artifacts and that's his auto packs uh, signature card and there's the Legends card from the same set. So there we go. Marc Messier. And there's some information on Marc Messier. Um, this has changed, obviously, because a lot more stuff has been released. But as of uh, August 2007, he had 2,300 plus cards. Total value was $38,771.04. Average value was twenty bucks, so but that's with a lot of the autographs and memorabilia factored in. 
Uh, he had uh, two rookies. Total number of autographs, 73. And there you go. And here's an article on uh, his son, uh, Noin Messier. And I don't think he ever made it to the NHL. I don't even know if he was drafted. I'll have to look that up. As I'm curious myself. But there we go. And, uh, there's a Marc Messier Super Collector book at that collection. Look at the old uh, jerseys. That's pretty cool. All-Star jerseys. When Gretzky and them went on tour during the lockout in 1994. Just a really cool looking collection. Rob Kirk. Wow. There we go. Some more information on the moose. He is pictured in the Rangers. Um, no. Not enough uh, pictures on the orders, in my opinion. It's all Rangers for whatever reason. I don't like that. So Crazy Eights. Uh, it says one one completed hobby project leads to another where amazingly all the card, right cards fell into place. And uh, so this is about the uh, what's this, so this game used? Uh, let me see. Okay. So he's just talking about how he tracked down all these difficult cards. And these are really nice. I'll show you now in a minute. But there's just his story. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Lee. That's the uh, author of this article. And just discuss how he uh, tracked down all these cards. And here's his cards right here. So this is some game used. I'm not exactly the sure of the set. I think it might be 0506. I could be mistaken. Just let me see. Okay. But either way, you got some fascinating cards right here. There. I want to get them out of the shadows. So some big names. Some really nice patch pieces. And all of these are just really, really like, yeah, really high-end stuff, especially at this time. Wow. So there we go. Just amazing. Now this is beautiful. Uh, 0607 The Cup Limited Logos. And look at some of these pieces. Like, I'm jealous the onwards. Just amazing. And you got some pretty good names here, too. Like there's there's Wayne Gretzky, Patrick Waugh, beautiful piece right there on the uh, Dustin Brown, if I'm not mistaken. So there we go. You can just see some of the names. Bobby Clark. That's a really nice piece on the Cam Neely. Henrik Lundqvist. There we go. El or Joe Monon, Gil Fleur. And then uh, you flip to the other side. And even more amazing patches. Wow. Just beautiful. And a lot of this is probably on the market now. Because 0607 to cup is very tough to find. Extremely tough. But I'm just curious to see if uh, any of these exact patches made it out there into people's collections. I'm, I'm just curious. But yeah. All signed. Just, just a beautiful... I miss when uh, Beckett used to do this. He used to just do a gallery and just show the cards. So that's pretty cool. Two of a kind. There are more questions and answers about the 1910-11 uh, uh, C56 Newsy Lalonde. Uh, this was a this is a really scarce card. Like way back in 1910. So right now that would be 107 years old. And that is crazy when you think about it. So here's the article on it. Uh, the history of the set. How it is limited. And uh, yeah. So if you want to give that a quick read. And this is a BMW sports card. So this is the gentleman whose ad was at the front of the, of the magazine. And he specializes in these type of issues so there we go he probably has an amazing collection uh, this is 10 plus years ago so I don't know if he's still around I'd say he is uh, but anyway moving on uh, here's the hot list 
So here's some of the inserts that were hot. At the time you had Parker's autographs, uh, Parker's uh, dual autographs, that's the 0607 set. Uh, 0607, the cup signature patches. So the cup was like pretty much new on the market. Well, 0506 was the first cup issue. And then here's some right there. Like, look at that, Gordie Howe. Beautiful. Just the, the wing wheel piece. And then autographed by Gordie Howe. Amazing. Ted Lindsay from the 0607 Parkhurst. Uh, here's the cup. Sidney Crosby base out of 249. And uh, here's some of the graded rookies, key graded uh, sales. Now, if they did that, if they did this, uh, well, type of report now, it'd probably be like take up several pages, because the grading market has just exploded. But this is when grading was relatively new. So yeah, here's some of the sales right here, like an 84, 85 Opeachy Steve Eisman. Uh, BGS 10 Pristine 2300 and an OPG Steve Arsman uh, PSA 10 Gemin 1000 Martin Brodeur so for 328 that's a 9.5 Sydney Crosby SP Authentic BGS 10 sold for 2000 that's a steal now sorry let me uh, show you there uh, Upper Deck Ice Sydney Crosby 9.5 3,457 and an upper deck ice of Thomas Vanek pristine 924 so these two Crosby cards alone you could probably get double even if not triple I would not be surprised because but those are steals right there in my opinion so there's some advertising uh, here's a product uh, review for 0708 upper deck series 1 and in this one in this one, uh, this was the rookie class for Jonathan Taze, Patrick Kane, and Carey Price. And uh, in Series 1, we had Carey Price and Patrick Kane. I believe Jonathan Taze was in Series 2. So, there we go. That's the Young Gun look design of 0708. We have one of the signature sensations of J.S. Jaguar. Right there, and just a recap of the 0708, what the product had to offer, uh, their take on it. But it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a review; it was a preview, because that set hadn't come out yet. So maybe in a future issue, we'll find 0708 uh, a box break of it. Here's the 0607 uh, patch job. Ryan Petoni and Benoit Pouliot. These two players were not featured in the. Beckett uh, rookie um, rookie Rolodex, they called it, or Holodex, or one of the two. But basically, it was just their rookies and a little um, analysis of the player, uh, worst case scenario, best case scenario. And some of these were just really cruel, but you know what? It was supposed to be taken in jest. I don't think it was meant any offense by it. Uh, just the scout says, and some of these were just like, wow. <laughs> Uh, but I think they're concerned they might have a bust on their hands, yeah. Then while Pudiat didn't really amount to much, Ryan Patoni. There's a list of their rookies. And uh, I do have the Beckett in there. I will dig it out. It's the uh, one with Paul Stastny on the cover and Phil Kessel, I believe. Okay, moving on. Uh, State of the Union. So here's an interview with uh, about the 06 07 uh, card season that had just passed and. Uh, now they were entering the 07 08 campaign. And uh, here is Carvin Chung, uh, who worked for Upper Deck. I don't know if he does now or not. As I said, this is outdated, so this is like 10 years old. Uh, but here's. Sorry, let me see if I can get a good. There you go, no shadows covering it. So you can also see what this is about. There we go. So it's just a Q&A with Carvin Chung about where the hobby was being brought, MVP, the cup, just discussing some of the trends in the hobby, how things were changing and evolving. There's a really nice uh, Evgeny Malkin. There we go. Rookie Patch Auto 
out of 99. And those cards are always just really nice. I, I'd love to get a Nathan McKinnon one. But that's probably way too expensive for my liking. Or There's a Jerome McGinley. Uh, letter marks, autograph. And this is the G. So let me just bring this down. So if you want, you can pause it. Read up on what the hobby was like. Some of the uh, Upper Decks take on things. And this was... Uh, I believe they had the exclusive rights to the NHL at this time. They were exiting the lockout. From the 0405 like time period, and uh, then yeah, Upper Deck had exclusive rights until Panini came into the market and in the game did. But yeah, Joe Thornton. There's a uh, from McDonald's, and these were pretty popular. And then the NHL mini jersey collection. So these were little mini jerseys, and they came one per pack. And you can see some breaks on YouTube. Uh, Zeri Gaming does a few, um, CN21Habs fan, just type in on, uh, YouTube, uh, mini jersey break, and you can see a lot of those around, they're pretty cool, okay, and it's all about the jersey, so, uh, the 4th Annual Me Great Game Worn Jersey Expo, and this is where some of the jerseys were exhibited, like, look at that one, the vintage, uh, Boston Bruins. That looks amazing. Like it's an actual sweater. Yeah. Let's see Gretzky, the Ottawa Senators, New York Rangers, even some masks. So a lot of the, uh, a lot of like buzz around this at the time. And here's the article on it. Discusses uh, the event itself. What uh, what was brought to the event? Some of the history behind it. The historical. Uh, significance of these jerseys and sorry let me see I can't stand that shadow I'm trying to avoid it for you there you go so if you want to pause it give it a quick read you can as always okay so we'll move on to this now uh, vintage graded card report so some of these are the sales what cards went for you see a wide variety of everything here so this, like I said, was when grading was just new on the market, and Beckett took full advantage of that, and they were pretty extensive in their uh, reporting of things. So PSA, Beckett, there we go. These are some of the noteworthy. Like for example, a 72-73 tops Bobby Orr Gem Mint. And there was only, uh, there was eight at the time, uh, pop report, sold at 50 raw grade and 440 bucks it sold for. You can just see some of the population reports, what these cards sell for raw and then the graded. Because graded, you always get a premium. Cards guaranteed to be pretty much great condition. Okay, uh, moving on to the signing session. So this is an article that uh, Matt Hershwitz used to run in the Beckett uh, Hockey. Uh, he's since moved on. Um, but this was the autographs. Uh, talking about like uh, autograph hunting in person, through the mail, and just people's uh, perspectives on how players did and reacted to autograph requests. So right here is Daniel Breer, Paul Correa, and yeah, just talks about uh, this player's signing habits. So that's pretty cool. Like for example, Paul Korea here, uh, signed with the Blues, and was reported to be very accessible to autograph. Yeah, so Paul Korea, I can picture him being very classy all the time. Same with Daniel Breer. I'd be surprised if uh, anyone had many negative reviews about those two players. Uh, 2006-07 SP game use, and that's the letter marks. And right here is all of the letters, uh, letter marks in each player's name, and that's a lot of letter marks. Holy crap! Um, I don't know if uh, these in the middle got released, but no, I think all of those got released and manufactured and autographed. That is crazy when you think about it. So, 
that's a list of some of the names like Nazan, Ryder, you got Nina Mackey, you got Felix Potvin, that might be Danny Potvin, I'm not too sure, uh, Dwayne Rolson, you have uh, Anson Carter, Jerome McGinla, that might be actually Jeff Carter, uh, Evgeny Malkin, Patrick Eliash, Cam Neely, you have Crosby, Svatos, Ryan Smith, just a wide variety of names right there. And here's some of the examples right here. So this is Patrick Marlowe, who have a Sedano Chera, really nice uh, to see, and Marion Gabbert. Okay, there's a short report on uh, the sales of the 06 07 uh, cup cards, and they were new on the market. So here's just some of the final sales of these cards. I wish I could avoid the Dark Shadows, but I apologize for that. So, right here, yeah. Modern Unlisted Stars and Semi Stars. Here we go. And that's like the Unlisted and Semi Stars right here, yeah. So, the cards that aren't listed in the guide at this time. So these players would fall under uh, unlisted stars, and then semi stars, and then for the vintage as well. Weird, weird look. Okay, so that's the one right there, the rookie card Rolodex. So it was the Rolodex, uh, and right there on the cover is Phil Kessel, Paul Stastny, and Anze Kopitar. And I keep forgetting that Anze Kopitar was part of the 0607 rookie class, but yes, he was. And uh, both of them, like all of them, like Kopitar and Kessel had the most prominent career thus far. Paul Stastny still couldn't, but he's had injury problems, but he's still a prominent player. So here's some of the, this is the readers, right? They're just discussing things. Do you have, <laughs> do you and your scouts have any idea of what you're talking about? Judging by the rookie Rolex, most of these young players are better suited on delivering pizzas than body checks. <laughs> so yeah, people not agreeing with Beckett, but Beckett said, you know what, they were talking about in terms of hobby, not on the ice. From my, from my, no. But, anyway. Try some queries there. And uh, here's an error and variation report. So, they get readers to uh, send in reports on uh, like the mistakes on the cards. So here's the Simon Gagne and no, sorry, yeah, Gagne and Kapanen. Uh The names of the players are wow. I can't even see that. Sorry. Transposed. Okay, so I think the names got mixed up. Okay, yeah, you, you used to get that a lot in those sets. <laughs> Upper deck just rushing to get things done and it screw up. So here we go. This stuff is pretty interesting too. Context free highlights from letters we aren't uh, running. And some of the comments on this are pretty hilarious if you want to give that a read. So, but this video is already running long, so I'm going to skip this right here. And into the hot singles. So, this is cool. Uh, so these are some of the hot cards you got in the Malkin uh, and Jordan Stahl from 0607 the Cup, Sidney Crosby uh, Ice, and underneath are the prices. Ante Kopitar, a really nice uh, patch there. Here's the 0506 the Cup, Sidney Crosby. It went for 10000 at this point. 10000 bucks. Wow, that's crazy. There's Paul Stastny, you have uh, Phil Kessel, went for 1500 Mark Andre Fleury, that one has gone way up because of his play as in recent years, and yeah, Sidney Crosby, uh, Malkin, Fleury, it just dominated the hot list at this point. So you'll see some of uh, Sidney Crosby's cards there. There's Dion Phaneuf, Zach Parise, Mark Andre Fleury, Ice. That's a really nice one from the rookies. Uh, upper deck uh, rookie update: Sidney Crosby dual signed. So Sidney Crosby on top. 2005 number one pick on the bottom and signed 
and imagine pulling that car down. That would be amazing. Wow. So here's the price guide. Not much to say there. Uh, I did not like the price guide at this time because they took out a lot of the sets, which was to cut back on content, but I didn't agree with it. And it kind of turned me off from back a bit at this time. Um, not much to say here. Just the key rookies are listed. And, yeah. <laughs> not much to say at all. Tough to beat a full house. So this is when Beck, the Beckett grading right here. And if this would agree with me, in turn, that would be great. Okay. So you can see some uh, singles. They cut back on a lot of the pictures from previous Beckett's. Uh, but you can still see some nice nice cards there at the odd time. There's a nice Edia Kovachuk rookie, uh, rookie year jersey card. Out of... Uh, be a player ultimate memorabilia. memorabilia. Yeah, there's Jason Spessa right there. Jason Spessa. Okay, that's cool. Is that I think that's John Michael Lawls or Merrick Spessas. So we'll skim through this. Uh, some of the young guns and all that. Black Diamond. There's the cop. There's uh, Sidney Crosby there, and his Becca now is like 850 bucks, but at the time of this, it was like 300 and something. 300, let's see if I can get that correctly. Three, 350, 250? I gotta get my eyes checked. I keep saying that, but yeah. So here's more 0506, and uh, this is the really strong rookie class. One of the strongest rookie classes in the history of the hobby. You got Ovechkin, uh, Crosby, Fanook, it's just stacked. And then leading into 0607, and 0607 had some really nice cards too. This is when I started buying boxes. I moved up to Alberta, moved from Newfoundland to Calgary, and I was buying a lot of packs and boxes at this time. And uh, it was just a fun time to collect. And I wish I still had some of the cards that I used to have, but they're long gone. Yeah. Just some just the price guides. You can pause any time if you want to look. I'm not going to go into whatever. So there's the graded price guide. They used to price the cards. And they could now, but... Like I said, there would be way too much information to list. I'm sure, I don't see why they can't release a yearly price guide on graded cards only. That would be amazing. And uh, it would clear up a lot of confusion between like what graded cards go for and raw. It would just clear up a lot. That's a really weird uh, ending. There's like no articles in the back at this time either, except for one. Uh, Western Union. So this is talking about the NHL added the 16 West Division in the expansion of 67. The game changed forever and for the better. So that's when Philly came over and this was like the original expansion uh, after the original six if I'm not mistaken. And then here we go. Here's an ad, an ad for 0708 artifacts and here's just some uh, samples of the cards. Mario Lemieux, Wayne Gretzky, dual jersey, that's pretty sweet. Uh, that is a, jeez, who is that? Is that Jack Johnson? No. Uh, yeah, Jack Johnson, rookie. Out of Artifacts, Joe Thornton, there's a nice Joe Sackick. Jack Johnson, rookie. That's, uh, oh, you screwed that one up. That's not even an autograph. They got the Jack Johnson picture twice, even though it clearly says Autofax here on the bottom. Oh, good old Upper Deck, screwing up their uh, ads. But yeah, and there's a treasured swat, uh, Swatches patch. Cold hard hits in every box. Yeah, Artifax is still a fun break. It's gone more high-end and limited now, but back in like the mid-2000s, like when it first came out, and even up to 12, 13, you had quite a few inserts and you got really nice patches out of it. It's always a fun 
cool break. Uh, don't buy retail though. Retail's a rip off. Don't even don't even go near retail. Buy the hobby if you're gonna go with artifacts and yeah. So that's it for that and uh, that's the back. More ads. I missed it this time and they used to they took out the artwork and they took out the back cover. They used to have a player here always, but what can you do? So anyway, that's a review of the Beckett Hockey from August of 2007. So hope you all enjoyed. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for the support. And stay tuned for more. If you want to see more Beckett reviews, let me know in the comment section. And I'll do my best to get more done. I have lots of Becketts. So many to go through. So if you're interested, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks all, and stay tuned for more. Thank you. Bye.